Howdy hey people, it's Lover Briars. Um, I have been requested to go over model show showing tips, basically, by um, R. Sally Productions. Um, but, and this has also brought up, been brought up um, quite a couple times, so um, I'm gonna do it. And it's really actually optimum time because I'm going to a show on May 24th, I think it is. Um, so, I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm already kind of preparing for it, but then again, I kind of slowed myself down because I realized, wait, that's in a couple months. <laughs> so, well, two months, but whatever. Um, so, I'm going to start off with this thing. Probably my um, most important tool that I have ever used for model horse showing. It's probably, and I really recommend these. I'm by far, uh, if you model horse show frequently, um, or on and off like I do, these things are the greatest things ever. Um, it's basically just like a tub. Um, that you don't have to get this exact one either, but this one's really helpful for me. You could even get more like slots because this one's just, well, you'll see. So it's just a tub, and basically you need like a couple, um, what's it called? Uh, containers, places to put stuff. <clears throat> And, um, so, yeah, you can see it's just a little, um, organizer. Um, I'll get to these in a second. But they should be able to hold, like, a little soft rag to wipe down your horses. It's, that's what I have. You definitely, 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 definitely need extra tags. Um, oh, well, well I'm just going to assume that you all know what tags are by now. I really don't want to get into it, basically. If you don't, I'll just go over it really quick. It's the horse's show name, your name on one side, and it's gender and breed. Or if you're like Region 6 or you have uh, Region 6, Region 10, then you have like those um, numbers, uh, Region X or whatever numbers. I don't really use those because I haven't gotten into it uh, too deeply yet because, well, i on and off show. So, um... Yeah, that's basically it. What was I saying? Alright, the tags. You definitely need new tags. Um, something could have happened to one, something could happen to the ones that you already have, and you want to change something to it, you could buy new horses at the show, uh, anything really. You always need new tags, and if people run out, um, you want to be able to say like, oh, I have a tag here. Um, so there's that. Then these pens, I call them my boo-boo fixer-uppers. The white is a pain in the butt, but I mean, if you are really in dire need with a white one, um, I have a white pen, but I usually would just etch it out, but it really depends on the model, because if you can, if it's on the body with the white, like, I'll show you an example, considering we have babies right here. So, say if it was on, um, like a model like this that has, like, white patches, you could just etch it off. But, if you have one of the older models that were actually painted, you couldn't etch that off, which I should actually fix that, because, I mean, let's see if I've already tried. Nope, not on this one, but I did do it on this one. Stupidly, when I was younger, I was trying to fix um, black markings on the white paint. As, as you can see, the white paint was scratched off. So, you need a white pen. So, there's that, and people, honestly, uh, rub, scratches, boo-boos are inevitable for model horse showing. It happens. I hate to say it, um, but it does happen. Um, sometimes, if you're lucky, it doesn't, and you get away with it, but it tends to happen. So, you always have things that can fix it. So, here are the reference sheets, which I need to fix all of these. None of these are correct. Um... But you definitely always want to have reference sheets. Um, they're really, they can even give you more points. So what a reference sheet is, is basically you have your model horse breed, which I don't have anyone, ever, anyone's reference card, I don't think. Um, yeah, I know. But for example, you'd have your horse standing like on the table, and then the reference sheet. And um, Basically, the reference sheet is the breed. It describes the whole the model horses. Excuse me, the horses breed, um, and anything you want to write in. You can even just look this up and just like paste it, 
and write, do a write-up on your own either way. And you want to always find a picture of the breed of horse that you're showing your model to the of one that looks closely to yours. So this one um, is Gringo's, which is my um, Peruvian Paso. He's a Palomino. Um, and I got him after... I got him for my grandmother because he looks just like... He looks just like her horse. And um, I used a picture of her horse, which that's him. And... Um, yeah, and I just, you know, matched it up. And, yeah, those are definitely important. You want to use those. Um, and moving on. In here... Ugh, so much struggle. Alright, so, basically, I have two folders over here. We'll start with them. This... This one's my model horse folder, blah, blah, blah. This holds all my stuff that I use for showing. So when I was uh, just starting Marta Horse showing, ignore these, this is from a while ago, but um, when I was just starting showing I'd have all these packets of research um, on what I would be showing in if I didn't know what was going on. So if you are new to it, these I don't even need anymore because I am used to it by now, but um, uh, if you're new to it there's definitely I have, I can, I don't know if I have the links to it, no I don't, but I have all of these different packets that I would used to look up, and it's really helpful to do research if you are just starting wild horse showing, if you're just getting into it, or you're confused by it, always do research, there's plenty of information out there that um, will help you, and yeah, so that's basically it, but what I use this folder for is, um, speak is if I were to show um, and it needed a write-up like this one was from my <sighs> first horse class for Golden Oaks and they say bring a write-up to make it make sense you can't just put a horse up there and be like oh there you go you need a write-up for a class such as that um, so there was that and then this one was my favorite my favorite, I think, model, and you needed to do a write-up for that. So, yep, and then I think some of these are just, um, show packets, which I should probably get into now, considering they're here. Show packets are probably the most important thing for showing your models. So, this is an old one, we'll just use this one. Um, there's always, there's usually, if you're going to a show that's bigger, there's usually show packets. And they usually tend to say um, the name of the show. I actually use Golden Oaks because that might be a little safer. So let's see. Um, I guess that's the only one I have. Okay, so it says like Golden Oaks. Uh, it says where it is. It says general info. Uh, different divisions they have, meaning like OF, the OF halter, owner custom, uh, professional custom and collectability, there's performance, uh, fun classes, and such things like that, but they, um, vary de depending on the shows. Um, they have fees, they have horse limits, and the awards that they'll be there, um, champions that would win, and tags, they'll explain that. Rules also varies. So, what is this? That's just a random thing. Okay, so they'll usually have something like this, which is um, when the classes start and when uh, they're going. So, and what the classes they have. So if they were to say, um, say they gave you something like this, and it says, number one, Arab, Morgan, other light breeds, and light foals. So what that means is that Arabians would go up first um, in the OF halter and such things like that. And it would go all the way down and into the show and blah blah blah. But that's about it. And what I'm saying with these is that you definitely want to have these. You um, you want to write maybe your horse's name that you're showing in them. Here, I'll show you an example. So I usually make things like this. Um, and it's ba and they actually usually have you make these and send them in. And it's a list of your model horses' names, breed, and gender um, with your name on it. And so. 
you'll definitely, um, definitely need to pass these in. Um, but what I usually do is I use these and I'll print an extra copy of them and I'll have all the horse's name and I don't know if I, not in this one, but you do need to pass these in, so sorry I'm jumping around like an idiot. Alright, you know what, I'm just going to push that over. And this is the important stuff, well these are all my ribbons. I don't know why they're in here, that's just some of them. Um, so yeah, what was I saying? Okay. So, this is what I usually make. I'll take all of these. It, I'll write like my models that are showing and I'll number them all the way down. This is for my, um, my use. And then the models at each class. And the, it will tie in for how it says number one. Number one will say Napoleon. He showed in the first horse fun class. And I, I write it down and such. And then, with that, from that, it stills number one, so number one, which is Napoleon, shows his breed. And it will go all the way down the list. Um, this is random. And, yeah. And also, I also have another one, but it's on my phone, because this is actually from an app on my phone, which, if I had my phone, I could show you, but I don't. So, um... I'll also make another page, so it'll say models in each class, breeds of models, and then what they placed. So it would be like placings of model, number one, placed first, and all the way down. Um, that's definitely helpful. I know that um, that was always really helpful, helpful for me. Um, when I win ribbons, too, no matter what happens, um, you get... You get your ribbon, and you should immediately write the horse who won it, and the date. I always sometimes forget the date, um, because that way you're not like, you have these random ribbons that you're like, oh, which one did this go to? So, that way you can just hang them up, and it would be easier. Also, which, those that have dog owners, my dog ate some of my ribbons, and I stupidly didn't have the that show written down with all the placings and what model placed what. And I lost the ribbons. I mean, I realized that I was missing, like, a couple uh, second places, a couple, um, you know. But I never figured out who <laughs> won the ribbons. And, yeah, it was great. So definitely, definitely write your horse's show name. Well, not your show names. Just their names on the back of the, uh, bleh, bleh, on the, back of the ribbon and um, on a separate piece of paper. So this is my little notebook. This is probably the most important thing that I use when I go showing. And um, basically it has little to-dos lists in it and has the date of it and what I have to do. So give me a to-do list. Um, I might write who's in what class, um, what I need to bring for that show, what, what models I might be looking for, and then um, maybe a, a little calendar of when um, what I need to do for each day. Here's another show of what to do and you know all the things that you need to do and these are really important to me because I, I'm very visual and I need to do lists so when you don't have a plan it tends to go really bad and you tend to miss things at the show and it's just a mess so you definitely need a plan and you definitely need to know what tack you're bringing you need to have all these things written down because it's just so much easier. Um, also, in my tote of wonderfulness, I have sticky wax. It's um, a pain in the butt for me. I really hate sticky wax. It never works for me. Um, but some people are really good with it, and you always should need it, especially when you perform do performances. Um, so that's really important. Definitely get some of those. Also, what's really important are these. <clears throat> if I can open it. Problem with one hand. Okay, so basically they're just makeup brushes. My horses are spoiled rotten and have very expensive makeup brushes. And um, they're really soft and it's mainly for dust if something was in them when they were packaged. You should already uh, dust them and I, what I was going to get to is this might sound ridiculous, but definitely give your horse a bath. It sounds stupid, but it... Um, 
it does wonders. You could take a model and, um, let's see, let's take him. So, he is a shelf model, and, you know, he does nothing, ignore his shiny marks, why he's a shelf model. Um, and he just kind of collects, he can collect dust and just random gunk, as you can tell on his back. It's just, just from standing there, which is really, really weird. He's like, why are you making fun of me? <laughs> but, um, so he can collect all this stuff, but if I were to give him a bath one, he'd be shinier, his coat would look better. Um, he'd be softer, which is weird, but it's true. And he wouldn't have any of these random gunk spots, or whatever you want to call them. And the dust would be gone. Sorry about that, camera died. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, definitely give the models um, baths, even wiping them down would be easier. Um, so yeah, but these are definitely important. It gets rid of dust, um, and what have you. Um, so you definitely bring these. There's a couple of them. There's small ones and whatever. And last but not least in this bucket is this blanket. And um, basically what you need to definitely bring is either a towel or a long blanket. Thin, not like a, you don't want to bring a comforter. But um, it's for your table, so when you have all your horses lined up, they can stand on it and not on a table. Um, one, because their hooves might get damaged from the table and a blanket is softer. And two, if dominoes were to occur, which we pray that it doesn't, but if dominoes were to occur, they could land on a softer surface than a plastic table. So, yes. Um, also, so with all of that, when you're done with all your really heavy duty information, you can go have fun and actually work with the models. Um, but that comes first. Homework first, which stinks, but it's important. And if you want more detail, I know I kind of just, like, blazed over that because it's a lot. Uh, I guess you could, like, I, you can email me. I'll set up my email and everything, and I'd love to explain. So, what I have is these little tabs, as you can see. And you can always do your own different thing, but this is what I do. I have tabs near them on who might be showing and who is definitely showing. And the red and pink tabs, only because I ran out of the red tabs. So, the red and pink tabs are who might be showing, and the yellow tab or the pink tab, and or red tab, is definitely uh, who is definitely showing. So that gives me a quick visual on um, who I can write down, and you always write it down too. So I already have them all their names written down. Like, one list says who's definitely showing and who might be, or who to be considered. So... Um, that's helpful so that you can, like, kind of narrow it down. You don't want to be like, let's bring my whole collection, or I don't know, I don't have a lot, so I'm just going to bring two. Definitely always, always look for the best in all your models, which is, sounds <laughs> over-motivating. Find the best in your children. <laughs> anyway, so, um, you do, you definitely do want to look for the best in them. Like, you don't want to be like, oh, well, he has a weird stance. We'll find something that you he could do. Because that's what I always said to him. I'd be like, oh, sorry, bud, you're just too awkward for me. You're stunning, but you're too awkward, and I don't know what I'd show you as. Um, which I did this year, and I'm totally being a hypocrite. But whatever, ignore me. So, But you do definitely want to look for... It's only because I have a lot of horses, and I try to narrow it down as close as I can. But if you don't have a lot, um, definitely always look for the best. Like, say... Say we just had this shelf. That's a bad example considering that's only a lot of congas. Okay, so say we had this shelf. Um, and you don't even show this guy. You're like, oh, well, I don't do much with him. Um, but he is in body quality and he's actually in good condition. Well, then find his breed. Find a really rockin' breed for him. Don't just be like, Nabster, which he could be. Definitely. And you might just go along with finding that. But if you can find a better breed that's really exotic, that's always what you want to go for. You don't... Like, that's why I kind of hate showing Arabians or Thoroughbreds or Quarter Horses. Because it's just a regular breed. And you're just like, ugh, Quarter Horse. I put no effort in finding a breed. And judges usually look at that and kind of frown upon it. 
So if you can find a more exotic breed, definitely do that. But as I was saying, if you have a small collection, always find the best. Be like, well, he's really nice. He has nice shading. If he had shading, <laughs> we'll pretend he does. He has nice shading on his nose. And all those little freckles are adorable. So if you do have a smaller collection, always look for the best. And um, I'm repeating myself, and it's really annoying. But you get my point. So, yeah, you always go for more. They are a pain. And, um, I don't have packing stuff so I can show you, but I can explain it because that was another thing that was requested. So, you have one of your horses. I'm going to use a stand, oh, one that has a stand because the other ones are obvious. So you can look at his belly for now. Oi. So, say you're packing up your horse and you're all set and everything's all taken care of. Um, there is an art to it. Um, so first off... Get rid of the stand immediately. You never, ever, ever pack a model with a stand. Um, if those who don't know that, never, ever, ever. That can do so many wrong things. That could hurt this horse, this could break, um, that could break, the stand could break, um, the stand could hurt other models that it's packed with, and it's also bulky. So, no. Um, but besides that, you what I usually do is... Toilet paper wrap around, um, or tissue paper, whatever. Toilet paper is really easy. And you just wrap it around all the um, more fragile parts, which uh, on his case is his tail, so his legs, um, and you could even say his ears, wrap it around his neck. Um, but the toilet paper is more support near for protection of scratches, rubs, and whatnot. And if it is bang, like banged or hit or whatever, that's more support and the tissue the tissue paper and or toilet paper absorbs the impact of that, hopefully. On top of that, um, you should I know a lot of people that use pony pony bags or whatever they're called, pony whatever, and they're just pouches or pony pouches, that's what they're called. And they're just pouches and you slide your horse in, then you could probably like um do like, what's it called? Bubble wrap, god. Bubble wrap them around it and then slide it in. Which I haven't used those, I don't have any, so I don't know how those work. I heard they were great and uh, they're well used. So if you want, if you have those, definitely use them. But I can't give you a reference because I have no idea. I don't have any. But also, I use a lot of bubble wrap. You want to do like in layers, so you don't want to just be like, bubble wrap the whole thing. You want to like go focus on his leg, focus on his belly, focus on his neck, and then focus on his head or wherever you want to start. Um, but it's definitely in layers. And after that, I usually put them in bags. So after they're wrapped up, I put them in a plastic bag, um, a tough bag, not like a stop and shop bag or whatever. You'd want like the briar bags. That's a good example. They have like hard, thick plastic, um, and you slide them in, then you cover a bag over it, so it'd be like in two bags. And that's how I pack it, and you stack them like on top of each other, so like model, model, model. And you don't want to just go, oh, model, 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 model. No, you just want to keep it flat. Um, also, in the big picture, uh, you could use suitcases, but they're a pain. Um, Big boxes are really helpful. That's what I use. Uh, you can bring bins. I heard bins were helpful. Um, what else could you do? I think that's about it. Any big box that you could use. I actually need to stand. So, yeah. And stable mates are even easier. You just basically um, wrap toilet paper around them and put them in a small baggie. Which is also a good use for that. If you have extra space in your tubs, you can put like your stable mates or smaller scaled models that you're showing in there. So that's really helpful. Um, but for traditionals and everything, sticks to boxes. What else do I have to cover? God, there's so much. Um, yeah, so for performances, oh, I'm trying to wrap up everything because this is such a big 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 thing there's so many different parts to it um, of model horse showing so we'll just go to performance and then I'll try to wrap it up or fun classes or whatever this is just how to it's not really explanation of model horse showing it's just tips for it as it says in the title anyway so if you are doing performances um, or performance classes 
I don't really have any good examples in here, so we'll go into my room. But if you are doing performances, you definitely want to make sure your tack is ready beforehand, which means you want to try it on the model first. Even though you're like, oh, I try it on this horse all the time, it's basically her saddle. You definitely, definitely always want to check. Now, this girl's a good example. So, I basically keep this saddle on her all the time. It never comes off. Um, this bridle, too. It's never really come off her, um, as you can see by the dust. So, she's okay, you should still take it off and put it back on and fix it in any sort of way, like this, I'd have to fix that little b Again, sorry, my battery died. Um, as I was saying, I'd have to fix the buckle on the side. So, there's always different, like, factors that you'd have to look at, and you can't just trust your tack, because... It's a pain, so, um, and never pack with it, never, ever, ever pack with it, which you always want to take it off, even if it is annoying, you, would you rather risk your model or have it be already on? You have to think about those things. So, yeah, that's about that. Put her on back, if I can. Ugh. Hands, when I wish I had 80 of them. Okay, I think, nope, you go over here. Oh boy. Alright, so there's that. Also, you want to make sure your setup of your performance is already um, drilled into your skull. Because you don't want to put it up there and be like, oh, improv, improv, improv. You don't want to do that. You want to be like, this she stands here, this will go there, the tack will stand in this sort of way. Um, and if you have backdrops, the backdrop will go in a sort of way, too. So, you want to make sure everything is planned ahead of time. Never plan at the show, because that ruins it, and you'll have a bad chance of doing well. Um, what else? Basically, what I'm just saying is make sure you have everything planned, and know who you're bringing, know who's going to be in each show, um... Also plan for how the show setup is going to go. So you might not know the show schedule because sometimes shows will be like, they'll give you the list of classes, but they won't give you the classes that are going with each other. Meaning, um, say if the OF class and the performance class is going together, and if you're showing your horse in OF and performance, you want to make sure that those classes don't... Um, clash with each other. So say you're showing your Arabian, okay, you're showing your Arabian, and you're gonna show them, show him in a OF class because he's so damn beautiful, and you want to put him in there and, oh no, he's in performance too, and what do you know, his performance class is going on at the same time as his OF class. Well, you better have to pick one of those. So it happens a lot. It's happened to me, and it's very annoying because you have this big, uh, like, big thing. Sometimes if they're nice, you can say, hold on, he's in this show. Can you just hold the performance classes? But if it's a big class, a big show, you don't want to hold everybody up because everybody will be like, ah. So that tends to happen. Uh, stinks when they don't tell you what classes are going with each other. Um... That usually can happen, so just prepare for that. And I'd say that's about it. I'm probably missing stuff. Always, always miss stuff, but whatever. Um, and if you have, along with reference cards, if you have something like, where's... Um, okay, it's right here, and I don't want to... Okay, she's standing on it. Well, I don't know if you can see. Alright, so it's her model card. Always bring those two. Those help. The more papers you have, the more obnoxious you are, and the more chance of, the more chance that you're going to do better, because you have all this reference, and you're like, smush all the reference in your face, look! And they'll be like, whoa, you go hardcore. Here's a blue ribbon. So, definitely always have a lot of information that helps. Because, I mean, if you imagine, if you were hosting the show, and you saw uh, pictures of the model, well, not of the model, but of a horse that looked just like the model, it had all the breed information, it had the card with it, and you're just like, boom, look at me, I'm all prepared. And then there's one next to it that has nothing, it's just a horse like, ooh, here I am. Obviously you'd pick the one with the 
more reference. Sorry, I'm really tired. If I sound crazy, don't mind me. So, yeah, that's, um, that's about it. I guess so. I guess, yeah. Oh, always, always, always prepare, prepare blah, 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 to bring more horses home. If Even if you don't know if they're selling horses there, always prepare for it. Last time, um, if you're going to a show like Golden Oak Stables, obviously you're probably going to buy a horse there. Um... But last time I went to a little show, I didn't think that they were going to sell horses because, I mean, it's just a show and someone was hosting it. Um, and it was small, but they had big old customs there. They were beautiful customs. Uh, they had raffles and everything. And I was like, oh, great. I didn't even have the money. I didn't have the money. I didn't have the space. And I was bummed because they were beautiful. And I missed out on it. So definitely bring extra money um, and extra space. Even little space, because this guy, we're going to even use him as an example. I won this guy. I didn't even know that they were going to um, gift stablemates or gift any model or gift anything besides ribbons uh, if you won. So I won a, what was it, uh, owner custom. He was, it was actually Kingston. He won an owner custom champion. He won out of all the owner customs. Uh, or actually, after all the owner, after all the owner, all the um, customs combined. So he won a champion of customs, and he won me this little clear stable mate. And I was so pumped. I'm like, oh, look at you, bringing me home a stable mate. So that was really exciting. Um, so yeah, more room. Bit of, we'll wrap it up. Pack, make sure you have more room, make sure you are over the top prepared, you have a lot of information, and you know what you're going to do, and just preparation, preparation, preparation. So, if you guys have any questions, I know this was kind of a crappy video, and it was all over the place, but if you have any questions that I can clarify my insanity, I'd be happy to. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys.